This motion wasn't caused by forces or torques applied to the wing nut. There were none, and yet it kept flipping. It was a strange and counterintuitive phenomenon, one that the Russians kept secret for 10 years. Why the secrecy? Well, that is what we're going to find out. Six years later, in 1991, a paper was published in the Journal of Dynamics and Differential Equations called The Twisting Tennis Racket. And although it was related, it of course makes no mention of the secret Janabekov effect. The paper says if you hold a tennis racket facing you and then flip it in the air like this, it not only rotates the way you intend it to, it also makes a half turn around an axis that passes through its handle. So the side that was originally facing you will be facing away when you catch it. Now to understand this, we need to go through some basics. Like there are three ways to spin a tennis racket about its three principal axes. First is about an axis that runs through the handle like this. The second is the way we were spinning it before with an axis that runs parallel to the head of the racket. And the third is about an axis that runs perpendicular to the head of the racket. Now it's easier to spin the racket around some of these axes than others. That is, you get more angular velocity for a given amount of torque. It's easiest to spin the racket around this first axis, it gets going really fast, and that is because the mass is distributed closer to this axis than to any of the others. We say its moment of inertia is the smallest when spinning in this orientation. And spinning about the third axis has the greatest moment of inertia and so the racket gets spinning pretty slowly. And that's because this mass is distributed as far from this axis as possible. So this is the maximum moment of inertia axis. Thanks for tuning in. What do you think about today's concept? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned. More mind-blowing content is coming soon.